Good day everyone, welcome back to another video. For today's video, we're going to talk about the mixed methods research. Specifically, we're going to continue on with the different types of mixed methods research designs. Now before we continue, let's have a short recap on what mixed methods research is. According to Cresswell in 2012 in his book, Educational Research, Planning, Conducting, and Evaluating Quantitative and Qualitative Research, a mixed methods research design is a procedure for collecting, analyzing, and mixing both quantitative and qualitative methods in a study for purposes of understanding research problems. This means that the mixed methods research designs involve both quantitative and qualitative data. After collection and analysis is done, both datasets would help provide supporting evidence or basis for the researcher to have a comparison, integration, articulation, and interpretation of the results. This particular process is also known as triangulation. Now at this point, we're going to answer this particular question. What are the different mixed methods designs? We have to remember that there are different mixed methods research designs. Specifically, we have the convergent parallel design, the explanatory sequential design, the exploratory sequential design, the embedded design, the transformative design, and the multiphase design. However, for this particular video, we're going to focus on these three types of mixed methods research designs. To learn more about the other three, you may click here to watch the video. First, we have the embedded design. In an embedded design, a researcher collects quantitative and qualitative data either simultaneously or sequentially. In an embedded design, we have a primary form of data, which is either quantitative or qualitative data and a secondary form of data which is also either quantitative or qualitative data. We have to take note that the collection of the secondary form of data may be done before, during, or after the collection of the primary form of data. The role of the secondary form of data is to help support or augment the primary form of data. Afterwards, the information will then lead to the interpretation. As mentioned, the collected second data, which is either qualitative or quantitative, help augment or support the primary data that has been collected. Now that leads us to this particular question. How is the embedded study different from the sequential and convergent designs? We have to take note that while the sequential designs, particularly the exploratory and explanatory designs, the convergent design and the embedded design involve the conduct of collecting both qualitative and quantitative data, the process of collecting data very much differs in each mixed methods design. To further clarify, let's compare the sequential designs to the embedded design. In a sequential design, the data collection is done sequentially, hence we have the term sequential designs. For example, in an explanatory sequential design, the quantitative data is collected first, followed by the collection of the qualitative data. In an exploratory sequential design, the qualitative data is collected first, followed by the collection of the quantitative data. Whereas in an embedded design, the data collection is done either sequentially or simultaneously. As mentioned earlier, in an embedded design, the collection of the secondary form of data may be done before, during, or after the collection of the primary form of data. As such, we can have this particular example. We can have quantitative data as the primary form of data, with qualitative data as a secondary form to help support or augment quantitative data. Or, we could have the qualitative data as our primary form of data, with quantitative data as our secondary form to help augment or support the quantitative data that has been collected. It should also be noted that in an embedded design, both datasets are collected during a single study. 
Now at this point, let's compare the convergent design to the embedded design. In a convergent design, the data collection is done simultaneously. Whereas in an embedded design, the data collection is done either sequentially or simultaneously, as what was mentioned before. In a convergent design, the data analysis is done for both datasets. As such, the results from the data analysis conducted in each dataset are compared to produce a synthesized interpretation, hence we have the term convergent. Whereas in an embedded design, the datasets collected are used to provide support or augment the information in the primary dataset. This means that the secondary set provides additional information which are not provided or found in the primary source of information. At this point, let's focus on this example, which is a quasi-experimental research. This example's objective is testing the effectiveness of a maths remediation program on the academic performance of students with low-level performance in mathematics. As this is a quasi-experimental research, the participants, who are students with low-level performance in mathematics, are identified through the conduct of a pretest scores in order to determine said students with low performance in mathematics. After the participants have been identified, they shall undergo an intervention. In this case, it would be the maths remediation program. After the program has been completed, they will undergo a post-test in order to determine their academic performance in mathematics whether there is an improvement or otherwise. This would then deem whether the intervention program has been effective or not. It should be noted that as this is an example of an embedded design, we could have the qualitative data collection which focuses on the experiences and feedback of the participants during the intervention program to help support or augment the results of the post-test scores and overall academic performance in mathematics. It should be noted that the qualitative data may be collected during or after the implementation of the program in order to further support the results of the study. At this point, let's focus on another example, this time a correlational research focusing on determining the connection between online gaming and critical thinking of high school students. For this example, the participants would be high school students who are online gamers. As this is a correlational research, we aim to determine the connection or the relationship between two variables, which are the frequency of playing online games and the level of critical thinking skills that they have. It should be noted that the main objective is to identify whether there's an actual significant relationship between online gaming and the critical thinking skills of the selected participants. Now, as this is an example of an embedded design, we could have this qualitative data which reflects the perspectives or experiences of the participants on the role of online gaming to their manner of thinking to help augment or support the results based on the data from the quantitative data collected. It should be noted that the qualitative data may be collected during or after the collection of the primary data to help support the results. Now at this point, let's focus on the transformative design. The transformative design is considered to be more complex than the other mixed methods research designs because it makes use of one of the four designs, namely the explanatory, exploratory, convergent, and embedded designs within a transformative framework or lens. This is according to Cresswell and Plano Clark in 2011. When we talk about the transformative framework or lens, this highlights the different social issues. Some examples are feminism, race, ethnicity, disability, and gender awareness and sensitivity. It should be noted that the main objective of the transformative design is to address a particular social issue and engage in research that brings about change. Hence, we have the term transformative. To further clarify, let's look at the following examples. For explanatory sequential, we start with the collection of quantitative data 
followed by the collection of qualitative data. This will then be interpreted and analyzed for the results. Take note that this particular process is within a particular transformative framework. For exploratory sequential, we start with the collection of qualitative data, followed by quantitative data collection and analysis and interpretation of the results, again, within a particular transformative framework. The convergent parallel design starts with the quantitative data collection followed by the data analysis, the qualitative data collection followed by the data analysis, after which the results are then compared, which would result in the interpretation and analysis of the particular data, again within a specific or a particular transformative framework. For the embedded design, we would follow this particular sequence. We would first have the primary form of data, which would be a quantitative data, followed by the secondary form of data, which is qualitative data, to help support or augment the information provided by the quantitative data or by the primary form of data to help with the interpretation and analysis of the results. We have to take note that since this is a transformative design, this particular sequence is done, again, within a particular transformative framework. Now at this point, let's look at this example, which is an explanatory research in transformative framework, which aims to determine the literature appreciation of millennials towards various LGBTQ plus themed 21st century literary pieces. Of course, the participants would be different millennials. For this particular example, since this is an explanatory research, we start with the quantitative data collection, which would be the levels of appreciation towards LGBTQ-themed literary pieces. We then collect qualitative data, which would be the perspectives and attitudes of millennials towards the LGBTQ plus culture to help come up with the interpretation. As this is a transformative design research, we have to take note that this particular process is done within the transformative framework or lens which focuses on gender awareness and sensitivity with hopes to promote change or to come up with an improvement or recommendation in the future. And finally, we have the multiphase design. The multiphase design is also recognized as a complex mixed methods research design because it is considered as a large-scale research. The multiphase design involves the use of multiple separate mixed methods design in order to examine a problem or a topic. According to Cresswell and Plano Clark in 2011, the intent of this design is to address a set of incremental research questions that all advance one programmatic research objective. Now, it should be noted that since a multiphase design is considered as a large-scale research, it requires researchers who have the knowledge, experience, and expertise about large-scale research, as well as have a clear understanding of the overall objective of the study that is being conducted. This is to ensure the accuracy of the conduct of the research and, of course, avoid committing any mistakes or discrepancies. To help you further understand the process or the sequence of a multiphase design, let's look at this general example. We start with an overall program objective. From there, we conduct different studies or phases to help us understand or come up with information in order to further achieve the objective that has been stated. For this example, we start with a qualitative study, which then gives us the information for the conduct of the quantitative study. From there, the information gathered will then lead to the conduct of the mixed method study, which will lead to the final interpretation. As this is considered as a multi-phase design, we have to take note that these processes or these phases are all encased in one general objective. Now, it is important to note that in a multi-phase research design, the different phases or stages are all interconnected 
and focus on the overall program objective that has been indicated. In a nutshell, the mixed methods research designs are characterized by the collection of both quantitative and qualitative data for purposes of attaining necessary information to address a problem or topic. Depending on the objective of the researcher, different types of mixed methods research designs may be used. In this video, we talked about the following. First, we add the embedded design. The embedded design involves a collection of qualitative and quantitative data either sequentially or simultaneously. Furthermore, in the embedded design, the secondary data is used to support or augment the primary data by providing additional information. We also talked about the transformative design, which makes use of basic mixed methods research design within a transformative framework. Another characteristic of the transformative design is that it is conducted to help promote change. And finally, we had the multiphase design, which is characterized by the examination of a problem or a topic using a series of multiple research designs.